Hey, Steve Basic Architect. Yeah, we're out here at the offsite build. You know, a lot of times I have conversations with clients or um, if I'm giving a presentation sometimes, you know, homeowners, non, non-industry people or young people to the industry. And um, a lot of times, and, 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 it, and I'll even be um, held victim to it. You're having a conversation with an HVAC guy or an engineer and they throw out something like OVM or, or something and you're like, huh, I never heard that term, what is it? So I figured I'd do a video. We have framing here. Um, I can walk through all, well not all, but as much nomenclature as I can remember <laughs> and shoot in the video. But um, why don't we just take a quick walk through and I'll throw out a bunch of nomenclature and uh, some of you might call it something different, so just put that in the comments um, below. But this is how I've come to know it. I'm outside of New England here, or you know, in, in New England. So we do things and we call things a little different. When I go down to Texas, I hear some different names to different things. Older framers talk about things slightly different than younger framers. Um, and calling them, but we're gonna use the terms that I'm aware of, and if you find something that contradicts it, certainly add to it, all right? So, anatomy of a wall real quick. The bottom board is a bottom plate. Plates are usually horizontal. Top plate, in this case here, it's what we would call a double top plate. So we have two top plates. On doors and windows, we usually have a jack. Some people call them trimmers. I know them as jacks. And the reason they're called jacks is because they jack up the header. So you can see this is supporting the header, which is the LVL, which stands for laminated veneer lumber inside. We'll look at that closely with one of the beams. But the header is nothing more than a short beam, right? We call them headers, but it's a window or door beam. It goes across, it gets jacked by the jack studs. The jack studs take it down to the rim joist. Rim joist puts it on the foundation, puts the load in the ground. The jack is usually complemented with a king. The king is nothing more than a common stud that goes all the way from top plate to bottom plate, but is usually a complement to the jack. If we go to a wall where you, know, you just have a common stud, then it is exactly the same dimension as the king stud. It's just, that's a stud that's carrying out whatever spacing on the wall. Now, the header here, we talked about the LVL. Because I do recessed headers, I put in what I call a head plate. So that's just another plate that comes out. So we are able to catch trim, or if we're doing drywall returns, we can catch that. Um, this was off-site built for some reason. I think they build this piece separately and then set it on top of the header, and that's what drove the reason for two of these. If we were site building this, there would only be one plate up on top. The little guy here in the middle, we would call those cripples, and the cripples are also these pieces down here that you'd find on a window. The window is very much like a door in that the side here we have jacks, the long one that complements it again is the king. We have our header, the cripples, head plate. And then we also have cripples that go from the sill or sill plate down to the bottom plate down there. Now on the outside, you'll notice this has insulating sheathing as well as our hard sheathing. The hard sheathing here is an OSB, which stands for oriented strand board. Um, uh, the other one that you would typically find is plywood, which is very similar to the LVL. They're made almost identically. Um, but this is an insulating sheathing. The insulation here is a polyisocyanurate, typically called polyiso. So if we're looking at our trusses, we would have bottom cord, web member, connector plate, connector plate, these are just um, like spacing struts that you put in to laterally brace the trusses during installation. The slope pieces that are on the top of the truss are called the top cord. And of course, the space here is called the heel height. 
which is how high is the end of the truss? Um, if I take a quick walk around here, you'll see we have a very large beam in here. Now this one is, LV, is called an LVL. When you look up at the bottom, you'll see it is no different than looking at a piece of plywood. It's called laminated veneer lumber. So they basically shear the tree into these eighth inch pieces and then they glue them up. These are typically made, I've actually been to the factory. Um, they're made in 64 foot lengths and they're about four foot in width. They're all made up as inch and three quarters. Roseburg does make an inch and three quarters, a three and a half and a uh, five and a quarter um, and a seven and a uh, seven and a seven and seven inch. Um, so they do bake multiple plies. In this case here, this is three beams. So we would call it a three ply, right? If it was only two, obviously two ply. If it was a single, single ply, hence the name. Um, <clears throat> and you see a lot of, we use a lot of LVLs these days. Um, in, our, in the older homes, you would see them, uh, we would call them a built up beam where they would do two by 10s, two by 12s, but the strength of these are um, vastly superior than a solid sawn piece of lumber. Plus the, um, the action of these are highly predictable. One of the things that you can't quite, you could generalize it, but you can't accurately fulfill is the prediction of if I have five different two by 12s and I test them all, the, the result of the test is gonna be a vastly different than if I took five LVLs that were made and I tested them independently. It would be a much narrower um, spectrum of results there in terms of bending and shear, et cetera, et cetera, just because those are built up and they're engineered. So all of these things, you know, these, um, the floor joist, we call it engineered, um, wood systems because we're taking wood and we're reconstituting it in different orientations. When these things get laid up in the plywood, we have grain going this way and then the next one, the grain goes this way and then the next one, it's this way. So you're getting this cross lamination in there that really helps develop the strength of it. The floor that I'm standing on, this is Advantech. Um, Advantech is the name like um, Xerox, but it is also an OSB and it's the floor sheathing. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think we ran through most of the stuff um, inside. Um, occasionally you'll see, you know, there's LVL studs too. Some of these were a little taller. So these are just basically smaller versions of the LVL beams. And a lot of times you'll see these things get put together. We'll have engineered wood columns and those would be, you know, a three by three by, uh, or yeah, four by four, sorry, four by six, six by six, six by eight. Again, depending on what types of values and the strength that we need in those, those would be a little different. But anyways, that's a quick rundown a bunch of the framing members here. Um, nothing else is jumping out at me like, okay, I've missed it. Um, you know, here you can see the offsite guys. This is actually a good example of what I would call a built up header. So this is solid sawn lumber. It's three pieces, but then it's spaced with OSB. So these are an inch and a half. So that's four and a half. And then you use two half inch pieces and that makes up the five and a half inches there, but a built up header is, you know, for many years was the go-to. A lot of guys, including myself now, simply use the LVLs and we uh, use the pocket header. So anyways, this is our offsite build. That's just a really quick class on some framing names. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Until next time, long live our buildings. <laughs>